could. It, it was, I just looked at the schedule of which room to go to. Like the schedule that's online. Okay, that one. And it said ELG 15. Yeah. I'm in the right place, right? You're in ELG 15. As because on the on the Drupal Camp London website, it says. Okay. Yeah. There's been so many talks that got changed to canceled. So. Okay. You're you're tied to the room, and I'm tied to the room. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's hope that uh, <laughs> people come. <laughs> let's hope that uh, whoever comes is. Okay, we're talking about marketing. <laughs> Once worked on a marketing department, and it was only my first day that I realized I was on the marketing team. It's like, oh, because I could have been, I could have, my role could have been marketing on comms. It just happened to sit in marketing. Okay. And I'd never been in the marketing team. I was like, okay, that's weird. Because historically, the, the comms and the marketing team were always kind of butting heads. Yeah. Yeah. And I had I had the same role on a comms team before, so when I found out I was on the marketing team my first day, I was like, oh dear. But it was good. Which um which company are you with? I was well back then it was Blah Blah Cart. It's like a, yeah. it's a big ride sharing company. And I was the photography manager, so it couldn't have okay. gone if I could have any work with that. Yeah. So I took out all those builds. There were a lot of build-in, build-outs. Oh, thank God. Thank you. They just end up making talks go slow. And, and they tend to lead the presenter to read the slides, <coughs> which is never good. Yeah. Chris did that a lot today in his keynote. Yeah? Yeah. So if nobody comes, you're off the hook. Yeah. And we have a talk. You know, ready. <coughs> I, I hope the delivery goes okay, but I'm really happy that I came up with this. I'm really... Nobody can draw hexagons. I told you that the other night. <laughs> but... Uh,
Just check the big screen. So this is the right place for you to go. It wasn't the original one advertised, so a couple of it figured it out. There's still a few people upstairs. Wait, does everybody think it's in a different room? No. Because um, if you check the big screen, this is right. Okay. But if you check the original schedule, this was originally meant to be a talk about uh, bringing in newcomers. So, so, so at some point there was a change in talks. Yeah, some people dropped out. Yeah, so this is like a last minute one. Right. So is that on paper? That's the, the one about newcomers is what's on paper. And the one about marketing is what's on the big screen up okay. upstairs. All right. But well, you met online, which is what, how I got the room number. Yeah. No. So it's correct room. It's just it's not the talk that people originally saw on the sheet. So hopefully you'll get someone to turn up for it. But there's still a handful of people upstairs. That should be. Scary. How upset are you going to be if nobody comes? Not very. <laughs> He, our team member was supposed to come and present this, but she got stuck in Ireland in the snow and couldn't ah. make couldn't it. Ah. Um, we have our first. If you sit down, Adrian, you're going to stay for the whole thing, though. I'll stay for the whole thing? If you're the, if you're the, the audience. <coughs> it's still recorded, right? Is it recorded? Yeah. It is? How does that happen? From where? Somewhere, is it that one? Yeah. And then there's uh, there's audio from the mic there, and then there's uh, a couple of microphones in the ceiling. So we just go to. Oh. See, so yeah, you should do it because people can still watch it. The commercial here is more than one session, and there's time blocks they wanted to go see. So. Yeah. Our kids kind of a scary work for a lot of people. <laughs> See, but that's, that's one of the fundamental problems uh, in the community. Yeah. And that's why... So our kids terrifying to people. Right. Okay. Metricky and creative and... Yeah. Kind of thing. <coughs> well, it seems to be a really good opportunity for us. Because I don't think other people are doing what we're doing. All right. Whenever you're ready. I've got two minutes. Really? Oh no. It's, it's uh, five hours. Kind of, you can wait till five if you want. I'm just sending a message to the group that I want to <coughs> talk about marketing. Oh, we've got one more. Sorry? I think two more people are coming as far as I know. So. Yeah? Okay. Should we wait two minutes then? Or? I'll wait another minute. All right, since it's 10 after, I guess I better start then. Um, so 
We're talking today about marketing uh, your open source project to increase contribution. My name is not Heather, like originally planned for this talk. Uh, my name is Tracy, and I work together with Jam. Uh, we're the co-founders co and partners of Open Strategy Partners. And Heather is our first full-time uh, team member, and unfortunately, her flight got canceled and she wasn't able to make it today. So I jumped in at the last second, and I'm going to try and do my best uh, to, to bring a similar perspective or a, a different perspective uh, to a topic that Heather's actually uh, taught us a lot about by joining our team. And uh, I just wanted to mention that a lot of what I'm covering today comes from working together with Heather and learning about technical communications from her experience and and um, and uh, her her knowledge in this space that comes from over 16 years or almost 17 years uh, in the Drupal space and and working with developers um, on communication <coughs> strategy. So uh, what we're going to cover, we're going to talk about. Uh, your goals for your, for your project, uh, defining contribution, defining marketing, building your strategy, and then talking about specific tactics. Um, so I wanted to get an understanding of who's in the room, and I guess this won't take very long today since we've got <laughs> two guests. Um, so <coughs> can you tell me a little bit about yourself and what brought you to the session? Uh, well, I'm working at FLW. My name I'm a technical team lead. Okay. Uh, but uh, we have an open source few. FMW has a few open source projects. Yeah. I'm contributing to, so it's quite interesting to me to how to make them grow. And how to to get more contribution to those projects. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, especially that. Okay. For. Okay. Excellent. And. Yeah. And over here? I'm, uh, I'm Adrian. I'm uh, Adrian. from a company called Softescu, and we are um, about to launch our first open source product. So uh, I'm, I'm here to learn on how we'll be able to market it to, to the larger community and you know, okay. to grow contributions. It's going to be pure open source project. So that's what I'm, I'm here for to learn. Okay, excellent. Cool. Then you're in the right place. <coughs> Good. Um, so, to kick off talking about goals, um, basically in the experience that we've had, in the conversations that we've had um, in Open Strategy Partners, uh, most of the goals have come down to, uh, to these three in some shape or form, and they all, um, they all sort of can be boil up into to these three goals. Um, and you know, the first one is deliver valuable technology, which is you know, what your, what your teams are, are great at, um, grow adoption, and then grow community and, and contribution. And these end up being very, uh, sort of like a virtuous circle because as you grow adoption, you're enabling the growth of the community and contribution, and the contribution makes better technology, and uh, better technology enables uh, more adoption. And so, just one way to look at it. Um, so let's talk about what we mean by contribution. Um, so we've got things like monetary contribution, code contribution, fixing patches, things like that, um, feedback and testing, support, documentation, those kinds of things. Um, are there any others that, that come to mind that should belong on this list? Event organizing. Uh, yeah. Mentoring. Mentoring. Social media. It, talking about it, talking yeah, about it. yeah. So um, <laughs> exactly, the two points that you guys brought up are marketing contributions, and I think that uh, a lot of the time those types of contributions seem to be quickly forgotten, or there's a lot less focus on them. So the focus is on uh, the technical contribution, but um, getting the word out and talking about how great the techno about talking about how great the technology is. Um, sharing your stories or your experiences with it, um, event attendance, social media, exactly, and those kinds of things all contribute to um, or make better contributions. 
Um, and thinking about why we would want to contribute. Uh, contribute. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different reasons, but I think the, the important point is when you're thinking about the types of people that you want to get contribution from, um, it's, it's going through an exercise of putting yourself in their shoes to understand what's going to motivate them to contribute. Why would, what benefit do they get from it? Is it going to help them? Um, you know, is it going to help them be a better part of the community? Is that going to appeal to them? Or is it that they want to demonstrate their expertise in a certain area? And those are the types of things that are really helpful to keep in mind when you're, um, when you're asking for their, for their help. Um, and these are some of the barriers to contribution that we wanted to uh, go over slightly. Um, so, you know, things like social interaction, if somebody feels unwelcome in the community, uh, that can be a barrier. If they feel like they don't have enough skill, um, like you were mentioning earlier, that a lot of people are, feel that they don't have marketing skills, so they don't want to write their story. But, you know, you don't necessarily need to have perfect writing skills to share your story and then ask somebody else to, to polish um, to, to polish the, the language in it. Um, you know, maybe they maybe there's a lack of documentation or um, yeah, other places. So <clears throat> let's talk about what marketing is. Um, so from your perspective, what do you what do you think marketing is? What's uh, or what is it to you? Positioning your product uh, to the end users mm -hmm. and um, yeah, how to encourage people to use your product, how to represent it, how to promote it. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or how to contribute to it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um, so what <laughs> what I've seen in my limited uh, time in the in the open source community is that a lot of people are allergic to marketing, and it <laughs> um, and you know not without merit. So I. I have seen we have seen a lot of the the buzzword bingo or marketing bingo. Um, you know, there's a, <coughs> a lot of kind of corporate speak or marketing speak floating around there that sometimes doesn't have substance, um, and and um, and it just it creates a bad reputation for us marketers. And so, obviously, we want to take a very different approach um, to marketing, and we want. Uh, we want to have authentic communication where we're talking about the value that uh, technology brings to change the lives of developers or change um, or make a contribution to the to the community. <coughs> so we can talk about uh, for a minute about what's what's gross about marketing, the things to avoid, um, things like manipulative tactics or buzzwords like we just saw thrown around. Um, <laughs> Gives us marketers a bad rap, um, and you know this is obviously all the things we want to avoid. Um, so I thought I'd throw a little joke in here. What does the new Chips Ahoy marketing director uh, do on her first day on the job? Any guesses? Enable cookies. Ooh. <laughs> I know it's terrible, but it's. I, it made me laugh, and it um, it was a great way to um, introduce the one of the topics that we've been thinking about a lot lately, and that's um, that more and more uh, technical products need to focus their marketing towards marketers and marketing departments. And um, you know we've been talking with a lot of agencies, and you know they're no longer selling their technology to the IT departments; they're selling them to the marketing departments because your website is your interface with your your clients. It's your your website is marketing; it's a marketing tool. Um, and so more and more, the uh, the marketing departments are sort of merging as like marketing technologists or 
um, something along those lines. And it's just more important to kind of, um, yeah, learn to love the marketers, I guess. And we, so we've, um, you know, in the, in the battle against buzzword bingo, we've been doing a lot of thinking about uh, what it means to have authentic communication. Um, and it's actually how I started a lot of conversations um, and, and our, the business with my business partner, Jam, uh, sort of grew out of these conversations um, where he was talking about having both compelling and accurate um, communication and talking about his ideas about what, how that, um, you know, his, his approach to that. And it basically, you know, goes through these three main components and, you know, it's really understanding who your audience is and what they really need from your product. It's not that you solve every problem in the world for them, but, um, uh, you know, what, what benefit, what value do you actually bring to them? Um, and then having like genuine hype free content and one of the ways um, that Jam has done this for the last decade is actually going out and speaking to the people who built the technology, getting their perspective, why they made a feature a certain way or why they, um, why they made certain technical decisions um, and translate that for the user and the benefit that that brings to them. Um, and taking that kind of an approach uh, builds a lot of trust um, in your communication and uh, obviously clarity in any communication um, needs to be very clear um, and we do this by organizing communication across uh, themes and channels. And <coughs> one second. Um, This idea of <coughs> excuse me. This idea of authentic communication is something that sort of led to our belief that um, you know authentic communication it actually drives connection, and it's connection that drives community, and that community actually creates a lot of business value. So, let's talk about strategy. Um, so here. <laughs> Late last night, I put this together, um, and it's sort of a collection of all of the components that you need to think about in your marketing, your contribution marketing uh, strategy. And these are all of the important pieces, um, and I've sort of took all of these different ideas that I, that, um, you know, I've spent a lot of time talking with Heather and talking with Jam, and learning about what, um, what marketing is in uh, to get contribution and so we go through you know what are your actual goals who is it targeted towards um, what are the vibrancy signals um, why your projects are your value proposition um, why people should contribute how they can contribute where to connect with them and what stories to tell so those are the components we're going to go through um, first one contribution goals um, so just a couple of examples, you know, if you want to increase, increase your code sprint attendees by 20 people, get a new sponsor, or, um, or ask a couple of people to share their story. Those are just some examples. Who, <coughs> um, so this is a, this is a commonly um, glossed over topic and that th people think, oh, well, it's just developers. I just need to reach out to developers um, because I want them to contribute code. And um, if you actually think about your goals, um, you might realize that you need some marketing people, you need some social media people, you may need some uh, event experts. Um, and also, you know, in, that's just talking about the specific people, but um, thinking about the, all of the community players and the people who might benefit from your project or that you can um, or that can support your project and so it's really helpful to kind of go through one of these stakeholder maps and just map out okay who who what groups do we have internally what kind of customers do we have 
what kind of uh, projects in the open source, uh, in the broader open source space, are relevant uh, to us that we can work together with, we can collaborate with, um, and who are some channel partners that might be able to uh, team up to, um, you know, for any number of reasons. So it's a really help a helpful exercise to go through. Uh, vibrancy signals. This uh, this was super interesting to me because. Um, when Heather first started working with us, she was starting to ask a ton of questions that I didn't realize were really, really important, actually. Um, and from a marketer, market, like a traditional marketing perspective, which is where I come from, you know, I thought, your website, your social media, that's the kind of stuff that's, that's important. That's the kind of stuff that indicates um, quality to anybody evaluating your project. Um, but what Heather brought in is, well, no, you gotta look on, GitHub, you got to see how much activity is happening there. Um, you know things like is the README file done well? Um, are the community guidelines document um, are they done professionally and detailed and all of those kinds of things? Um, and so I would challenge you to think about what are those signals that you want to put out to the developers and or marketers or other personas that you want to attract um, and and just to make sure that they're all. They're clean. They're professional. They're 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 communicating the message that uh, with intention. <clears throat> so why your project? This is uh, your traditional value proposition. Um, understanding what value your technology and your project brings to the users and um, to everyone in that stakeholder group um, that you mapped out before. And this is a great example from Strategizer. I don't know if you know the, the uh, business model canvas. It's the same guys that uh, built that. Um, also have this value proposition canvas, uh, which is really great. Um, what we've found in working on uh, highly technical projects is a very, it, it's, it's extremely helpful to do a very deep technical analysis uh, to start with. So we've done this for um, another open source CMS and we've done this for our other client, um, Drud, and going through and comparing feature by feature um, what value that brings. So I put like a spreadsheet of a few hundred things, um, but then going through, through that exercise and grouping those and comparing those and understanding, okay, what are the points of parity and what are the points of differentiation to what's already available in the market? Um, and developing your value proposition from that is, is an extremely useful exercise and um, will, be, will bring so much more substance to the messaging uh, that you develop out of that. Uh, so why contribute? Um, so I think this goes back to an earlier point that I was making to just put yourself in the shoes of the people that you're trying to get contribution from and understand what um, what benefits it's going to bring them uh, and, and build that right into your messaging. How to contribute. Um, having your contribution guidelines all ready. Um, and also thinking about where to connect. Um, so not just your your website or social media, but actually at the events, how you're representing your product and your project um, at the various events that you attend um, and every other uh, channel. Um, <clears throat> and then the, uh, the biggest and most important part of the strategy is then uh, what stories do you want to tell? And here's a few examples um, of the different narrative lines that, that we built uh, for our client Dread that's just on the, uh, just at the table that side of the room. Um, and, you know, coming up with not, not only the technology stories about, uh, you know, what feature sets you have or what problems it solves, that's all really important. But also narratives like, hey, we're actively involved in supporting these open source events, um, in your social media channels, uh, celebrating open source community leaders and interesting things that they've done, um, and uh, yeah, 
So another example that uh, that Dread is was doing is supporting and enabling open source contribution sprints. So they've built an entire uh, sprint kit uh, to enable the the people in the sprints to get started a lot faster. All right, talk about some tactics. Um, we uh, we wanted to look along the customer journey and which touch points are really important. Um, and so we see we wanted to talk about the first contact, how they seek information, getting them to download and install the technology, seeking help, and then <laughs> and then, oops, and then contributing. Yeah. <clears throat> so, first contact could be uh, somebody within the community uh, tweeting about your product. Could be a number of other things, but uh, you know, this was a great example. Um, other points of, of first contact could be um, at an event a blog post, um, a featured um, a featured interview if you're interviewed on somebody else's uh, podcast or blog or whatnot, uh, white papers, etc. And then um, and then seeking information and from what we understand people um, so your, your README file is like a brand landing page, um, and yeah, here's an example of the one that, that uh, our client has for, for DDEV, um, and this is, it should clearly articulate you know, your value proposition and the overview, which license you use, um, it should provide dependency information, what's supported, um, it should link to a contribution guide and uh, let you know where to get support and help. Yeah. Then hopefully they download and install it and give it a try. Um, and I guess it's more likely that your users are going to download and install your project uh, before they read much of the uh, documentation. I don't know, is this your experience? Like, what do you, do you, read about it first and then download and test something out, or do you test it and then try to find out find out about it? I read first. You read first? Yeah. I think okay. most people break it first and then, then read something. You think so? What about you? Yeah, I think uh, I'm in the same, uh, the same group. Break it first and then read about it? Yeah. Okay. So the, sometimes I don't have the, I know I don't have the patient read the documentation, go out and try it, and then I see it, it's stuck, but I know from people that it wor works, so I have to go back and read the documentation and take so, it. <laughs> so as it, as it, I think it depends on what we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So as, as marketers, and especially for Tracy coming in from a very classic business background, um, it's really challenging to, to market this sort of open source technology because it's, it's really, really self-service, right? Everybody just takes it and tries it and does it. And, and to get people excited about it, uh, you have to be, you know, you have to have great documentation, you have to have all this stuff in place on, on GitHub, right, which is, and it doesn't matter what sort of paper your brochure is printed on, stuff like that, right, it's a, it's a really interesting challenge. Yeah. <clears throat> I think oh. in uh, open source, we have lots of options in general, like for one particular problem, there are like 10 maybe solutions. So sometimes I'm, I'm in the position that I want to test out quickly as possible to get an opinion and then you know decide on what product I'm going to invest more in reading and documenting and mm. contributing. So that's I think one one from from the from the other side of the you know the barricade there are many options so sometimes you don't need you don't have the time to go and document on what you are going to stick to. Mm. Okay. But really what I do, I go to the GitHub or to some documentation and first read the key features of that or that tool 
to find out if it's worth your time to yeah and okay. to, to see if there some specific <coughs> feature that I'm struggling with or yeah. is there better solution for something okay so okay okay um, so the fourth uh, touch point would be to seek help um, and so I think this is very clear that you should have clear uh, support guidelines and letting know, people know how to uh, get support for your project. Um, this was uh, an idea of Heather's that there's um, a robot called High Five that automates um, <laughs> basic social pleasantries. Um, but I guess the point is to, um, however you achieve it, to enable you know quick reactions to support your support channels and things like that. Um, <coughs> and then contribution, how they can contribute and uh, making that really clear. And <coughs> yeah, being really clear about the guidelines and the development norms. Um, they, uh, and in addition to sort of that technical communication aspect, which was the last uh, four slides, um, enabling you know things like your content marketing strategy, your content strategy um, in something uh, in a, a flow similar to this. And what I'd like to do, since we're in this interesting format, uh, we have uh, two people here, so we could actually go back through. What I'd like to do is. Uh, go back through to the strategy canvas and talk about your spe specific projects and brainstorm those together. Is that is that cool with you guys? Yeah, sure. Okay, I feel like that would be... Sorry, there we go. All right, sorry, I forget your name. Michel. Michel, okay. Yeah. Um, and so you said you had multiple uh, open source projects within FFW. Uh, Do you want to give us one example of your favorite, your most interesting? Um, yeah, but I will start with the one I am contributing more to, or the one that was founded in office I work. So we have a Docker based um, environment for local development that's called Duxel, but uh, which uses Docker, but I will not speak about that. I will speak about rather about the thing called CI Kit. CI Kit? Okay. Yeah, it started um, <coughs> before the Duxel and at some point Duxel became more popular because it uses Docker and we were using Drupal VM, but it doesn't matter. So really what it gives you, it gives you something that Docsol cannot um, accept the local environment. It also gives you a um, tool to build um, like a set of machines for um, for continuous integration. Okay. So, so it's not only about the local environment, but uh, setting up a set of um, virtual machines okay. to build your code, to get your PR builds ready, to get your demo environment set. Yeah. And um, what, do you, what are your contribution goals? What do you... Are you trying to enable people to contribute code? Do you want them to provide feedback? Do you want, what are your? All of that, actually. All of it? We, we want to encourage people to use it to contribute code. The contribution to documentation would be really great, I think, because from now it's very technical. OK. <laughs> so. It's okay when you just go and install and use it, but if 
there is something you want to change it the level where when you can do the changes is quite high okay and so your audience is is very developer focused yeah. then obviously okay and um, but for different types of developers do you um, well ma major auditories web developers not okay. only Drupal okay so so beyond uh, the Drupal community so anybody doing web development uh, yeah yeah you okay it works with any PHP yeah. CMS or framework and for you the vibrancy signals um, for your project the things some of the items that I had listed earlier I can <coughs> Find those. Is it yeah. more than this? Is there more? Is there? A <coughs> uh, well, generally, it covers most of the signals because, yeah, the main hosting is GitHub. Yeah. And in general, it's for developers. Mm. What about the fact that it's supported by FFW? That's a pretty large agency, right? Like that would be. Um, sort of a signal of how well the project is supported and that might be interesting and attractive for people to become involved. Is that... So, so yeah, what, what's the question? Um, is it, like, maybe that's an additional signal that you can think about, that uh, the fact that it's uh, supported by, by a large agency, that's something that um, potential contrib contributors might find uh, attractive. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can include that. Yeah. And the, uh, the sort of the the time that pull requests are are left before review, and, and you know how many documentation pages say API TBD, right? Like like this, like the the more that you have in there on GitHub, the better the better off you are. Yeah, and um, so I think we talked about. A little bit about um, like what your project is, and uh, but what uh, what advantage um, does your tool bring over other options that they have available? Uh, in general, uh, it's completely free, and it gives you <coughs> the whole setup of your local and CI environment um, in few commands. Yeah. So there are a lot of options from uh, hosting companies like Acquia, Platform SH, uh, Amazie.io, <coughs> etc. Uh, but in general, they are uh, not free to use yeah. for CI. So the main uh, feature I found useful is that configuration of your local setup and configuration of the CI ser server is one file and it's the same for both. Okay. So you just run a command to set up the local environment, you run a command to set up the CI environment and you know that they are the same. Okay. Okay. And um, why, why should people contribute? What do they get from it? They will get um, commits on GitHub. Gamification. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, they can improve the existing skills because it's built on Ansible and Python. Okay. Yeah. So that's something you want to learn if you go a bit outside of the Drupal. Yeah. So Drupal is more about PHP and Symfony, and uh, the, this project is more about the tools. Yeah. And um, I think so. Then the next steps would be to think about how they how they contribute. That all of that is clear on your GitHub page, and where they should connect. And based on that, then what types of stories should you be telling and, and talking about? And I just want to jump over because we've got five minutes left, so I want to hear about another project. What was, it? What was the tool called? CI Kit. CI Kit. 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 Yeah. 
Um, so sorry, can you tell me your name again? Adrian. Adrian, okay. Hey Adrian, can you tell me a little bit more about your sure. project? Um, we are uh, building an open source uh, <coughs> tool called Open Story. And it's basically at its simplest level to explain an interface for content editors to enter and manage content on Drupal sites, probably in the future WordPress and other CMSs. Um, we built that uh, starting from the um, from our let's say um, um, experience in the in the Drupal market that content editors find the Drupal interface to be a bit hard to use and um, uh, lagging behind. Uh, when you are comparing even with other open source solutions like uh, uh, like WordPress, but even more if you're comparing with Adobe and Sidecore, which have all much more nicer, uh, uh, let's say, user experience for yeah. the content editors. So we start uh, to build this a uh, couple of months ago, and it's based on uh, Angular, so that means it's completely, it's very responsive, really fast, and looks, you know, has a, we, we invested a lot in, in the design and the, the uh, user interface of this tool. Okay. And it's uh, kind of a, a decouple approach to the content management uh, or content editing uh, part of, uh, of, of a CMS. So we envision that this kind of uh, uh, tool can be used to connect to other decoupled CMSs in the future. Basically, you are providing an authoring, uh, uh, transparent or let's say a unified authoring experience no matter what kind of CMS your developers has decided to use. They want to use Drupal because it fits the needs for that project. They use WordPress or they use Contenta or any other CMSs. But for your editors, they will have access, the content editor will have access to the same unified uh, experience for the managing part of the content. So that's in short. Oh, that but, sounds uh, extremely attractive. I yeah. Think. So we, um, it's open source. Uh, we we, uh, we envision that it's a tool uh, to be used by the larger community. Um, mm -hmm. um, we are building and we are building and supporting the development of efforts for that because it's something that you know someone has to start working on. Um, on um, on some up, I, I like the idea of the marketing canvas and, and make, made me think on how uh, on some of the things that we are lagging and you know, should be addressed in, in the project. Uh, what I want to add on the why the contribute part is that uh, we, this is an idea uh, born in a lab. I would say you know it's a it's a silo yeah. idea. You know it's based on our assumption and on the on uh, what we have noticed within the market. However. Um, uh, uh, the idea is as valuable as the community uh, behind it. So that means we, from my point of view, um, people who want to contribute or contribute back to this idea would be to make it more, to adapt it to more larger cases that they have discovered through their own experiences. So okay. um, there will be there will be no you know recognition at the, at the beginning. From the community will be rather small, but the. One reason for them to contribute back is to extend the use case and improve on the tool that you know has been offered for free, uh, yep. basically. So you, you can uh, take a role and extend that and make it more useful for your users' cases and for the others in general. So that that will be something that we will have to communicate in terms of why uh, why uh, uh, to contribute. Uh, yeah, on the signals part, I'm not very clear what what they actually mean um, you know obviously you know we, there, there is an agency behind and support it and we, we have like four people working for or full time on it already mm -hmm. to to kick it off and and go on a beta version um, and uh, yeah will be a, I'll be will be amazing to have one extra contributor outside the, our company but you know mm -hmm. that we are months behind that so We'll see in the in the future. It is challenging. You know? so obviously, uh, when you approach an open source project from a company point of view, uh, it somehow is, it's a cost because you will take people from the clients' projects, billable hours, so to say, uh, and it's not necessarily an investment because uh, it's open source and there is no actually revenue model out of the box. So. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I would say this is, uh, I find it challenging from my point of view as an agency uh, manager 
uh, mm -hmm. creating open source project uh, pro uh, projects is uh, is rather difficult and expensive. So I think the the who for you is quite different uh, from Mikael Mikael's yeah. uh, example because. Not only do you need development contributions, yes. but you need content editors, you need marketing managers, you need yeah, exactly. all of the other audience. But also, it sounds like you're looking for a partner, so yeah. some another agency, for example, to uh, take a leading role and um, contribute, like maybe a marketing agency or yeah, yeah. <laughs> something like that. It's, so it's true. Our our who or our audience will be the content editors that you know presumably should be able to request this to, from their from their developers and then should be also developers who will want to contribute back or implement this tool on top of their websites. Yeah. yeah. And um, just as one last question, so how are you trying to connect with them right now? How are you trying to uh, get contribution? What stories are you telling them? So we, we, uh, we start writing some uh, blog post on Medium regarding the need of such a tool and the reasoning behind that, but it's still uh, uh, within the lab, so it's not. It's it's going to be announced, you know, in a, in a couple of weeks or maybe um, you know, up to DrupalCon Nashville uh, as a as a beta version. But we haven't planned any strategy or any concrete actions for how to connect, how to promote. this we yeah. are still. Heavily focused on on the tech tech side, so the tech side. Know. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I'm happy to continue the conversation afterwards if yeah, you want. Yeah, sure, and, sure. And Thank you for the more. input. Has been really useful, actually. I'm yeah. Really Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Good. I'm very glad to hear. And since I'm a couple of minutes over, I guess I should wrap it up. But. Thank you very much that you guys attended. You. So I at least got to practice and um, yeah, go through the presentation. And thank you for your patience. So thank you. So the hybrid signals, you know, when you're thinking around GitHub, it's really easy to see dead projects. Oh, yeah. For stuff, it's like just like uh, the the vibrant signals are like this is a lot of people are working on it. If you do something, your effort is going to be multiplied. Like there's community yeah. happening. The pull request, somebody's looking at them. People are being light. Maybe there's a Slack share. Yeah. 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 You know, if the documentation is in yeah. place, the, 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 if it's command line, 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 I think the, the biggest question in, in my mind about your about your tool is um, uh, sort of that this is a real problem. Yes. Yeah. But where do you like? Where do you want to take it? Like, what is it that you need it to be? And are you building a business model on it, or is it just to make your clients happier or make your day easier? Like, what? Like, what is the actual point for you? So, uh, definitely something that I want to make my uh, our clients because lots of projects that we've done and COVID over the years they get stuck on, on the content editing part. Like people are late with content, if you ask them to enter the content on the website, they say it's complicated, you know, I have sent you this word file and you do it and we do it so it's because we want to get the product uh, the site on the market and on production level. Uh, on on the on the on our side as a business obviously I have some goals and wishes for, for this on the long term maybe it will help us you know, change a bit the model we currently are running but I have no idea how and when and you know the matter <coughs> and obviously you know, we have to market this you know, maybe there is no market for such a tool even if it's a problem maybe that's not the Correct solution for the problem that we we found. So you know it's uh, it's uh, it's complicated. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And those are the those are the those are the you, you at least you're asking a lot of the right questions. Yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Of course, I'll give you my card as well. And I'll, I I know Jam very well. I bump oh, okay. each other in lots of events, and I hope I'll. It will still happen. Yeah. Uh, 